I'm tired of the other women. I'm tired of him using me. For two months, I didn't even hear from you. Where were you? I'm overwhelmed, man. I love you. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. He fooled you about 50 times. We are a financial disaster because of him. Divorce doesn't exist where I'm from. Neither one of you is wrong for having your opinions, but it just makes you wrong for each other. There's been a huge breach of trust, according to you. She was on the fast with the pastor. She sent her pictures with a smoothie of straw in her mouth mm. and a Sasha McMuffin. Can I eat this, pasta? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, hold on, why you got to send pictures with it? Here is today's case. She says his drinking, constant disappearing acts, and his inability to keep a job is too much. She wants a divorce. She says he refuses to sign the papers. He wants his family back and wants to be a father to the three kids. That's today's case on Divorce Court. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, our virtual audience is filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Will from Johnson City, Tennessee. Will, welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us today. Your Honor, this is the case of Mullins versus Warren. Thank you, Juan. Miss <laughs> Trinity Mullen. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your husband, Mr. Cantrell Warren. Yes, Your Honor. To Divorce Court today. The two of you have been married. For a few years, you've been separated for the last year and a half, and you're yes, here because you want a divorce. Yes, Your Honor. Based on a number of issues in your marriage. You also have a witness with you today, Mr. Harrison Potter. Yes, Your Honor. I'll hear from you shortly, Mr. Potter. Thank you for being here. I understand that you have been opposed to the divorce, Mr. Warren, and you're here today to talk about that. But I'll start with you, Ms. Mullen. Why don't you give me some background? How did the two of you meet? Yes, Your Honor. Um, me and my best friend was on our way to New Orleans, and we accidentally went the wrong way on I-10 and ended up in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. So I was at a gas station, and I ran into him by accident. We, we kind of clicked, and um, he asked me, did I want to come down there to Louisiana? and take care of his son. That's How long had the two of you known each other at that point? Maybe a month. Before the two of you got married? That's what you... That's how you knew each other? Yes, ma'am. I was taking care of his son, and we also had two children together before we got married. Mm -hmm. so. It's interesting circumstances how you met, but in a way, it worked out because the two of you fell in love. Yes, and you decide to get married. What happened? We had three kids together, and a family member told me that was the best thing she at my Russian. entrance. Mm -hmm. because we was going to always have to deal with each other. Mm -hmm. So we might as well get married so we're a family and we all have the last name. Mm -hmm. And um, because we were stuck for 18 years because I was pregnant when we got married. So, mm -hmm. so that's how we ended up getting married. Um, what do you have to say, sir? That's basically what was going <laughs> on at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So You had created married. this family. And I had to marry her because of sudden... sudden uh, Customs. No, it is. You it was what? Kids. Southern custom. You have so many Southern children. Southern customs. Because you had three children and the right thing to do was to get married at that time. Yes, ma'am. So I think you both understand now that going into marriage generally is not a good idea to say, oh, might as well. Mm -hmm. Right. True. You should not just marry somebody because you have kids with them, so... So, you have three children, you get married, but you said right after you got married, that's when everything started going downhill? Yes, that's What correct. happened? It's just like the marriage put so much strain on us as a, a person that we had... I guess marriage and society had built us up to thinking that once we got married, everything would just get better. Mm. But actually, it just makes everything worse. Well, you preaching to the choir here today, <laughs> Miss, Miss Mullen, but go ahead and tell me how it got worse. What happened? One time... He was drinking a little bit before he went to the store. He come home and then knocks on the door and tells me, Trin, the police is outside. And I said, no, they're not. He said, yes, they are. I got pulled over. I said, okay, why are they up here through the parking lot, up the stairs, knocking on the door? Why did you bring them up here? He said, oh, because I'm going to give them the weed I have. Like, why would you tell on yourself? They're so like, you're saying he got pulled he over, himself, but yeah. then he brought the police to the house? To give them weed that was inside weed. the house. So he snitched on himself is what you're saying? Basically. Mr. Warren, do you remember that? Had you I been drinking that I don't even know day? where that come from. That is okay. completely a lie. Really? You think she's making that up? I should know when I get pulled over. I know I know. every time I got pulled over. Well, I remember them... Have you been, had you been drinking and driving? 
Not that I know of, but I don't even know where the story come from. That's what I'm trying it to It came from out. what happened. Where okay. were we? That, that's so what you're saying you're Lamar's saying you have no memory of that story, Correct. but it could be true. Never could be true. It's not true. Because I, I, I remember if I get pulled over. Your response is not that you know of. So when you say that, it leads me to believe it could have happened and you just don't remember, perhaps, because you had been drinking. Oh, well, let me rephrase that. It never happened. Interesting. Okay. What do you say happened with his job and with work? Well, he's had several jobs, but he likes to argue with his bosses and make his bosses think that he knows more about the business than what other workers know. And some of the people who have been there have been there for 20 and 30 years doing the same job, and here comes Cantrell telling them that everything they're doing is wrong, that they don't know how to add and subtract, that they don't know how to bend the metal the right way. Never mind that he's only been there for a few months. But the people who've been there for 20 and 30 years, he wants to say they don't do his job. And the boss come to him and told him, like, you cannot do that. And he got into an argument with them and got fired. And the worst part about that whole situation was... First I was, of all, I quit. I was pregnant with our second baby. Mm -hmm. So you should have uh, kept your job and just closed your mouth because clearly you didn't know what you was talking about. And if you did, they wouldn't have corrected you. What happened? The owner of the company brought in someone who didn't know anything about the type of work I was in. What kind of work? She met. I did air conditions. And the guy, you know, told my boss he know this and that about the air conditioning business. And come to find out, he knows nothing. He doesn't even know how to work the tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And therefore, one day we were working, he almost got me shot. So therefore, I'm gonna quit right then and there. That's my life. You say he almost got you shocked. Yes, ma'am. He was cutting a piece of metal and sparks flew everywhere, like electrically okay, shocked. Okay, got it. So you quit that day? Uh, I got into it with the boss that day and I told him he can kiss my... And till you get straight, until you get him straight, I'm not coming back. Okay. And so that happened, but at the time, you were the major source of income, the primary source of income for the two of you, and yeah. that's why it became a problem? Yes. So you've had a number of issues with finances. How were you managing? I was managing well. I don't know what she's talking about. Your Honor, we've had eviction notices on our door, water cut off, and no lights, which led me to work in two jobs that he quit while I was pregnant. Was that an ongoing issue between the two of you, your finances? Yeah, it was because we already had his son plus our daughter, and I was pregnant with another baby, and our family was growing. So, obviously, if I'm pregnant with a high-risk baby, then why should I be out at work every day when you could do it? You're a physically able man. Mm -hmm. That's your job. Go out there and work while I grow your baby in my stomach. So what was going on? Why were you having difficulties at these various jobs? Uh, she would just call me too much at work. And, then, uh, you know, the bosses would be like, you're getting too many phone calls at work, you, you know, more work and less time on the phone. I'm like, she's kind of pregnant, so I'm just trying to figure out exactly what's her problem. What happened with the golf cart? I have no recollection of anything about a golf cart. Well, I do. If he don't remember, I do, because L uh, the police was looking for him behind it. Um, he worked at a campus, and his job was to do concessions. So, at the campus he worked at, he does not have a driver's license, therefore he is not allowed to drive any motorized vehicle because he is not on their insurance. And he says he took the golf cart just to go to the dumpster. The dumpster is probably the distance from here to behind you. He could have walked there, but they couldn't find the golf cart, and they called the campus police, and all of a sudden, he pulled up on the golf cart. And he's like, oh, man, I'm just taking the trash out. And I was on the phone with him when he did it, so he can't say he don't remember it, because we was talking to each other. He said, oh, babe, I gotta let you go. The police is uh, looking for the golf cart, and started laughing about it. Mm -hmm. So, he taken the golf cart to run a work errand. So you're saying. he says, yes. That's what his excuse was to why he was on the golf cart is because he was taking trash to the dumpster. But he was not authorized to use that golf cart. And that's why he got fired from that job? Yeah, probably. That's probably why, unless there's more to it that he didn't tell me, but that's from what I understood. So what happened that time, Mr. Warren? Oh, the job she's talking about, I continued working after she had left and everything, so... Mm -hmm. He was rehired back. 
So, I never left. So you've had a number of issues with finances while the two of you were married. How were you managing? I was managing well. I don't know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, we've had eviction notices on our door, water cut off, and no lights. Mm -hmm. So, no, we did not have uh, stable finances. We was in a hotel with our kids, which led me to work in two jobs that he quit while I was pregnant. First I of all, you only work... I had a one job... One year out of five <laughs> years, so where is the work that you're talking about? Okay, well, I had a job at a restaurant, and I was a waitress, and he was the cook. It was in the flood in 2016 when Baton Rouge was flooded mm -hmm. and we was placed into a hotel. We got kicked out of one hotel, moved to another hotel, which was right by where we worked. So we would walk from where we was to work. Once we finally saved up the money and did everything we needed to in January the following year and got the house, his job was gone. He said, oh, we got the house, it's good. Uh, I got the check that comes at the end of the month, so I really don't need to work. I'm out here working when I'm pregnant. I just had a baby, and I'm out here working at this restaurant making maybe $80 a week plus tips, which wasn't much. Well, it sounds like the two of you continuing to have children really put a strain on an already difficult time right. that you were having. Correct. Mm -hmm. I really just want him to sign the papers that he promised me he would sign when I... Well, when he spent hey, as a matter of fact, bring him right here right now. I sign him right here. I want him right here. Please. Do. Hey, mind your business. Hey, listen, right, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's his problem. He's so obnoxious and just inconsiderate. Go ahead. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. And you said in addition to the fiscal irresponsibility you say you witnessed during the marriage. Another reason you want the divorce is because he also cheated numerous times. Yes, he did. Tell me about that. Um, his cheating was uh, not just meeting somebody outside and just being friends with them. It was getting on the internet and find them. An example was I was asking him to look something up on his phone and he had a missed call. And I'm like, who is this? He told me it was a high school friend. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I waited a few minutes, got her phone number, plugged it in onto a escort website, and guess what popped up? Her. Then I called her. She told me that her phone rung in hours that she was not accepting clients and she was just returning the call. No, it was not a high school friend. It was an escort. Is that true, And I'm sir? already pregnant, so it wasn't like he wasn't getting what he needed at home. Not an escort, an yes, old was. high school friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and was she working as an escort at the time? I don't know what she did. Interesting. I'm sorry, but if it wasn't an escort, he used to call himself a highway pimp. He used huh? to get on websites and look at prostitutes and ask them to work for him, bro. That is where all the numbers in his phone, like, are you for real right now? I'm sorry. That just really upset me because he's acting like he did not do stuff that he did do. Mr. And... Warren? I'm sorry, but these stories are getting a little too e exaggerated for me. So you, you, you deny everything that she's saying about what she says happened during your marriage? Oh, that was the most definite lies and, and made I know exactly stories. where we was when this happened, Your Honor. If I was lying, how do I know the exact location in Baton Rouge where we was at? Ma'am, I understand you brought a witness with you today, Mr. Harrison Potter. Correct. Sir, would you step up, please? Thank you for being here, Mr. Potter. How do you know Miss Mullen? Oh, we went to school together. Mm-hmm. And, like, she knew me, but I really didn't know her at the time. She had a crush on me. Okay. Per se. Well, what, you talking about high school? Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay, so high school crushes. And yeah. what about today? She is she the woman of my life right now. She, she is. Yes, ma'am. Look how beautiful she is. <laughs> okay, so because I want to make sure I'm clear, you've been separated. The two of you have been separated yeah. for how long? Um, almost two years. Almost two years? Yeah. And you haven't gone forward with the divorce in two years? Oh, yes, ma'am. I had paid for the divorce myself. You did? Right, so That's what happened? What... You got to ask him. He didn't ever sign it. The lawyer had was supposed to file the thing, file the paperwork over, and he was supposed to sign it, but he didn't want to sign it. Would you hand those papers to my bailiff, please, Juan? Thank you. Well, How did the two of you meet? On Facebook. You met on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you see, we got the social social media problems. Yeah, 
Facebook, Facebook is very Google different, a, sir, also, than an escort Liger. website. Same thing. Now, Mr. Warren, based on everything mm -hmm. I've heard here today, the two of you have been separated for almost two years. Is it true that you've refused to sign the papers? No, nah, she had supposed to be came back home to uh, sign the papers and went totally different directions. I, I was did. like, I come on, let's sign know. these papers. Okay, so you're never, ready as well? You never came my way so we can go get them notarized on mm -hmm. one sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. Your Honor, I cashed at him $40 to go to a notary to get them signed. Then when he did not do that and wasted my $40, I got in my car with my three kids and I drove, drove to Louisiana with him in my front seat and I told him, you can come sign the paperwork or we can meet and then he just all of a sudden refused to sign them. He says that he got to see his kids to sign them, but you haven't seen them in you three years. You should have text so messages of this. Well, this is unfortunate because you do have three children Correct. together. And so far, you haven't been able to come to an agreement. I understand that the marriage itself, the dissolution of the marriage, but a bigger concern is that the fact that you have three young children. The oldest is five or six years old. You've got to find a way. I honestly don't ask him for nothing when it comes to my kids. I don't need him to do anything for them. Mm -hmm. I really just want him to sign the papers that he promised me he would sign when I... Well, when he spent hey, the As a matter of fact, bring him right here right now. I sign him right here, on right here. Let's make it easy. Please do. That's his problem. He's so obnoxious and just inconsiderate. No, let him sign the papers. That's what we can. Are right, you cool? Your horse, you already know what's up. Boy, you better chill out, boy. Stop, please. You know what's up with me? Please no, stop. bro. Please yeah, you stop. can. Please stop. Have a please, you might want to get him out of state. Please stop. Oh. Please stop. Nah, no, he, stop. Nah, he please stop. Like, please no, stop. you better get him out of state. Shut up. Don't tell me shut up, man. Mind your no, business. Don't go right, hold, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Put your glasses on. Put your glasses on. This shit over with. Stupid Look at him right out again. Still didn't sign the paper. No, man. She ain't gonna lie on me like that. No. Wrong with her. What's so challenging about being in this courtroom every day, there are a lot of emotions involved in the cases because this is your life and you have children and there's a lot of history. And uh, Mr. Warren got very upset today and he walked out of court and we've decided to finish the case without him. But you, you have a long road ahead of you because the two of you have three children together. And it is my wish for you that you are able to navigate that and find some peace between the two of you some kind of way as you raise your children. I looked over your papers. I find them to be sufficient, and I'm gonna hand them to Juan and ask him to serve Mr. Warren outside of court today. So he said that he would be willing to sign, even if he's not, you can move forward with a divorce by default. I understand that you are now in a relationship with Mr. Potter, and you were upset as well today, sir, and you have your reasons as well for being upset, but Mr. Warren is the father of three of your children. So you're gonna have to find a way to navigate this space because you're in her life, she has three children with Mr. Warren. I know it's not gonna be easy, but I wish all of you will. Good luck. Thank you. The best advice she gave me today was try to uh, co-parent the best we could with the mess we have going on. I just plan to, when I leave, file my divorce papers and plan my life with him and take care of our kids like we've been doing.